We've got that weekend feeling. It's time for another What a Shout on the Grand National Eve. We film all the big calls this weekend on all the very biggest races. Welcome back. Myself, Dave Orton, as ever, in the chair with you this Friday. What a good time to be on planet Earth it is. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. Facebook, welcome along to the party or indeed anything on Twitter. Hashtag what a shout in conjunction with our sponsors, Bet365. And as ever, Paul Keeley joins me back in the studio. How are we feeling this week, Kills? Good, mate. It took me 28 races to allow a winner at Cheltenham. It took me one for Aintree, so I'm full of beans at the moment, yeah. Boom but, time on Thursday when yeah, Protector Act came good. Yeah, had yeah. a good old shout up. Love, love a bit of that. Yeah, so it, this is a great festival, isn't it? I mean, you know, Cheltenham is the mecca. We know that. We look through it all throughout the winter. Well, this is, this is the thing. You spend your entire um, season talking about Cheltenham especially in the last couple of weeks. And if you're asked to go and do previews and what, okay, we didn't do that many this year because of COVID, uh, a few online. But you're just saying the same thing over and over again about the same horses. And then Aintree suddenly creeps up on you and here it is. And you think, oh, fresh race. Like, you know, so yeah, there, there is a little bit of excitement about it. Yeah, lovely, jubbly. All right, so we'll be getting some pearls, some keels. Pat Cooney, as ever, joins us from our sponsors, 365. Pat, welcome along. Yes, enjoying it. And uh, as Keel said, Aintree is just, it just seems much more fun, doesn't it? Seems much more a laid back attitude to it all. And uh, so hard to find the winners, mind you. 66 to 1 winner of the Hunter Chase yesterday. So uh, it's not straightforward, but uh, it just seems more fun and less pressure, I think. Well, absolutely. Less Irish horses coming over as well, but we'll get to that. We'll look at what's happened so far this week. But who have we got for you this week? Once again, we scour the racing world to find the best guests for you. And when it comes to Grand Nationals, nationals of any kind, actually, who better? Certainly in recent memory than from County Tipperary. He joins us all the way. It's Leighton Aspel. Welcome along, Leighton. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, great to have you on, man. I mean, let's just have a little talk about your career and refresh everyone's memories if they need to, that to happen. Uh, of course, uh, your brother Paddy, he rides as well. You were taught by your father to do it. You came over to Britain, didn't you? You had a great time of it. Basically, you won two Welsh Grand Nationals, 2001 on Supreme Glory, four years later on the Old Mare L'Aventure as well. So that was all good. Then you retired, Leighton, went to do a bit of work riding. You thought, no. I'm not done with yet. You came back, and what a decision that was. Because, of course, Pinot de Ray in 2014 was followed by Many Clouds winning two Grand Nationals for you. I think you became the first back-to-back -back rider to do that since Red Rum, only the third since the Second World War. Some decision, my friend. Yeah, it absolutely was. Um, <clears throat> and, and, and lucky for me, I did. And I got the opportunity to, you know, to want to ride in all them great races and, and then, you know, then luckily to win them too. I'll tell you what, later, I've got a story to tell and, 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 just, and just bear with me here because I became, you know, that race at the, uh, that there is a racing fan club of Leighton. Leighton was one of the only jockeys to have his race. Or oh, I was signed up to that because I was on Pinot de Ray in 2014. <sighs> Uh, it was it, it was one of my best tips, I think. Uh, anyway, so loads of people on it. I've still got people that say, do you remember Pinot de Ray? What a day that was. Leighton was on it. It was the first time he'd ridden horse. And then a year later, this week in 2015, I sat on the London Racing Club panel mm. with Leighton next to me. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I really, he, he might know where I'm going with this. Yeah. And yeah. if you remember, many clouds who went on to win the national that year, mm. that week, had won in the Gold Cup. And, and finished sixth of 16, beating 25 lengths behind Coney Gree on soft ground. Everyone thought he'd left it behind, including Leighton Aspel. <laughs> so when I sat on the panel, I really, really fancied one, and I gave it up to the panel. And you know which horse I'm going to say now, don't you? And I said to Leighton, I said, many clouds. He went, oh, I think he's over the top a little bit. You know, He put me off totally, basically. <laughs> and so when it comes to the Saturday of that week, Paddy Brennan, St. R, we're getting over the second laugh. Paddy actually had a look yeah. over his shoulder to see what was going on. Who was on his inside? Leighton and many clouds. And we know what happens. He went on to win. So I've got a little bit of a bone to pick with you, Leighton, on that front. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and we had a few good nights in the London Racing Club. Um, and yeah, there was a couple of a couple of days where we weren't sure whether many clouds was at, at his best. Um, but thankfully, he proved us all wrong. And actually, on hindsight, his run in the Gold Cup wasn't, wasn't a bad run at all. 
<laughs> Turned out to be a prep. Of course, many yeah. clouds became the first entry national winner to win again in a long time. And he, he was of his era, Kills. He was one of the most popular horses. Oh, he was tough as old boots, wasn't he? I mean, he just tried every time, didn't he? A very, very sad end for the horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but uh, yeah, he just tried every single time. He, he, was, he was great. I can't believe he let himself get put off, though. I mean, what do we all say <laughs> about jockeys? They're the worst judges in the game. What do we all say that, don't we? I, know. I thought the national was the easiest <laughs> thing in the world when St. R came up to him and Paddy had a look yeah. over his shoulder. Sorry, Somebody Paddy. Somebody said, oh, Jockey doesn't like it. I'll be going, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. But let me tell you, later we'll be a better judge on the show, that's for sure. And later, just tell us a little bit about what you're up to now. You're over in Kansas Tipperary because you're working for Joseph Ove O'Brien, right? Yep. Um, been over here now since we relocated last May. Uh, I'm only 30 minutes from, from Joseph's. Um, and I contacted Brendan Powell and I got myself a, a job there. Um, and, uh, you know, in, incredibly impressive place. It's very busy. Um, and I was lucky enough last year, we got a trip down to Melbourne for the spring carnival. We uh, we conquered Australia in the Melbourne Cup. Wow. Um, but uh, it's, yeah, it's 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 very, very impressive place to work. Yeah, and some right old machines. I'm going to try and tease a couple out of you, actually, for the viewers. I know it's National Week, but there's one in particular that I want to hear about. And Pat Cooney, have you got a question for Leighton? Yeah, I was keen to ask Leighton when he rode Pino de Rey. You know, you win the Grand National, first time you'd ever ridden the horse. That's, that would be the equivalent to us mere mortals driving on the M25 on a Friday night in a car we've never sat in before. How, how strange is it? And how, how do you approach a Grand National never having sat on a horse before? Do you just take it as a straightforward thing to do? It just seems bizarre to us ordinary people. Yeah, you take it as straightforward as you possibly can. Like, we we get on horses. We were getting on horses every day of the week that, um, you know, we've never seen before. Some some we do ride out uh, and we ride on a regular basis like Manny Clouds or, and, 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 and countless others. But you often get last-minute call-ups to ride horses um, for trainers. I was lucky enough to give Pina de Rey a school down in Lambourne over the entry star fences. And Richard Newland's string at the time were absolutely red hot. Um, so it, it was it was just the perfect time to be, to be getting on Pina de Rey. There you go. Absolute memories being teased already. Shall we have a look at what's coming up for you on this week's show? OK, we've got the hot topic and the rating clues. We're going to merge them for you because it's all about the race. We'll be having a look back exactly what's happened so far at the Grand National Festival. We'll be looking at all the big race previews culminating five o'clock. Don't forget the Grand National time. We'll be giving you all the big tips on the panels, the concessions from Bet365, some big calls and, of course, the weekend winners. OK, if you'd like to sign up to our sponsors, Bet365, for the Grand National Weekend, when doing so, we have a referral code still out there for you. On entering, type in SHOUT365, minimum £5 deposit for up to 100 bet credits. Terms and conditions apply. Hot topic, stroke racing clues then. Uh, day one, what happened so far at the Aintree Festival? We thought that was right because we're going heavy on the racing previews before we get all the good stuff from Leighton as well. Obviously, uh, we filmed Friday morning, so that's all still to come. But there were some trends emerging yesterday, Kills. First three races, one by the same connections, first thing to say, and also horses that had skipped the festival. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, three, uh, two, you know, Dan Skelton and Paul Nichols um, had a little team that they decided to keep away from it. Uh, Mon Morale could easily have gone for the triumph, um, would have been high up in the bet in one of the fabs. Uh, didn't, came home, absolutely slammed Adagio, who was, who was second in the triumph. Looks, looks a very nice horse. Trainer says he'll stay over hurdles for another year, probably. Because Mon Morale. Mon Morale, this is, sorry, yeah, we'll, we'll stay over hurdles for another year, probably. I don't think they're all that good, but I think he's definitely a. a, a He's a soft ground chaser in the making for sure. He's got some action on him, isn't he? Mm. Um, he's, um, you know, he's a lovely horse. He looks like a Rolls Royce to me, absolutely. He's soft ground, no problems. He's still a bit green. It's whether they go over fence or not. Cobden would like to go, Harry Cobden, and Nichols and the owners will obviously well, have they were just worrying about They don't get the age allowance for, for, for that it long. Be, is it? I mean, yeah. You know, they used to get five pound at Cheltenham, didn't they? Like, Hit, you know. Hitman, who they've got, you know, who was beaten in the first mm. race, of course, they, mm. it, they he used to would get a bigger allowance, didn't they? Yeah, it? exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Uh, so, and of course, we saw a big winner of the Hunter Chase or whatever. But Mon Morale, uh, would you stick over? But would you, there's some word about going up and trip. I wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't worry me at all what they do with it. To be honest, Protector Rat. Then let's talk about your big winner. 
Uh, yeah, it was good to see him. It was good to see him come back. Um, he, you know, I have slightly, slight feeling that he might be one of those horses that was flashy at the start of the season and then just tails off because that that had been in the past. But the wind up seemed to have worked. Um, he's a nice horse going forward, and you know, there's more come from him. He's still only young. Mm, do you think they'll campaign him a bit more sparingly even next year? Could he be one of those horses we don't see that I much? Think they, I, 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 I think they might do. I think it's probably, you know, he doesn't want too many races in a row anyway, put it that way. Ryanair or back to Aintree? I don't know, yeah. Um, you would say Ryanair, you would say Ryanair. You know, he's won at Cheltenham. OK, Pat Cooney, let's come to you because we've, we've got to talk about Tiger Roll, haven't we, of course, who was beaten in the Betway Bowl. We've done this to death. But I'll tell you what, Pat, uh, this week, as Kills will know, you will know, Leighton will know, anyone in racing will know, uh, you know anyone who's got anything to do with the racing post or anything you work for, ITV, whatever you're doing, your phone buzzes this week, doesn't it? What wins the national? Have you got any tips for national? I'm, uh, I'm almost getting more sick of talking to people about why Tiger Roll is not running or going for a third Grand National. Yeah, it's tough to explain, isn't it? And, and you're, you're right, I get phone calls and I'm thinking, uh, who is this person? And it's a relative of mine that I've not spoken to for a year. <laughs> and uh, I keep thinking it's a spam call I keep getting. I said, oh, hi, just checking in. What do you what do you fancy tomorrow? We fancy this. I suppose Tiger Roll will win again, won't he? And you say, well, actually, he was last of four yesterday. So, uh, yeah, it's a shame. He's run. Uh, I, I think it's interesting what the handicapper wants to do with Tiger Roll. Uh, is he going to drop the horse? Uh, for running the way he did on Thursday? I don't know. But yeah, you're right. It's uh, plenty of calls asking about Tiger. One horse that caught my eye on uh, Thursday was the Shunter. Bit of a thorn in the side of bookmakers uh, all season, really. Had he jumped a lot better yesterday, I'm sure he would have got a lot nearer to uh, the winner of that race. He's not stopped winning yet. And interesting, J.P. McManus has bought him. So he's onwards and upwards still. I'd expect him to have a good season next year uh, in the J.P. colours. Yeah, another really interesting horse. Quick word on Tiger Roll. Uh, yeah, interesting one, wasn't it? Like, you know, because Stuart's called him in for, you know, because it's supposed to tender handling and, you Couldn't know, make it up. the owner said he was there to prove the handicap were wrong, that he wasn't good enough. Um, very, very strange, um, you know, the whole scenario, but maybe he isn't good enough. Sums up 2021, doesn't it? And basically, so far. So, don't tiger roll in the Grand National. Actually, it was my, my phone was buzzing during that. I think it was my father in law. I'm going to say this cloth cap. <laughs> Big race preview time then. Let's go grade one again. We've been treated to many, many grade ones so far. And it's the Mersey Novice Hurdle, the two and a half mile up. Pat Cooney, there's a hot pot in this. Yeah, there certainly is. My Drogo and a theme really we found at Aintree on the opening day. A lot of the punters wanted to get with the horses that didn't turn up at Cheltenham, who were good enough to run at Cheltenham, but didn't bother to go. It was quite a, quite a uh, successful policy on the opening day. A punters, again, a little bit like that again with these races coming up. They want to get with the horses that weren't running at the festival. My Drogo, an obvious one in question here. He won very easy, didn't he, at Kelso last time out. Dan Skelton was very quick to say Aintree next for him, and he's been a very well-supported favourite. He's now around about 15 to 8. Of course, the flip side of that is Bally Adam, who was second of beating a long enough way at the festival. But he's got the form in the book. If you go for form, he's there at five to two. And then, and there's an interesting one, the real deal of uh, the McNally's, a right win machine, this one. Stepping up in grade, he's going to be popular as well. But my Drogo, visually, he looks the part, and he's coming here as the fresher horse. There's tons of money around for him. He's going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, I mean, I'm of the opinion, Kills, that this probably just wins, I think. Uh, Skelton's had three runners in this race since he started training. All three have placed. I think this is the one that goes one better for him. Yeah, I mean, I thought at the start of the week there's the potential that the two best British novice hurdlers were running at Aintree rather than Cheltenham, one being Dusart that runs later today and the other one being uh, my Drogo. He has looked very, very good. I wanted to take him on um, at Ascot a couple of starts ago because... Uh, I, I just thought, looking at his action, um, he might not want the ground too soft, but I mean, he absolutely sluiced up there, and then he came out on good ground at Kelso and did the same. He just ran all over them. He's a very good horse. He's kept away from Cheltenham specifically because the trainer doesn't want to bottom him at Cheltenham this year because he thinks he's going to be a super chaser. Mm. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's any doubt about him being a proper grade one novice hurdle, hurdler either. I'd find them very hard to beat. So we're the same. And what about the Irish alternatives? There's a lot of people who are watching this and going, well, they've just got the best novice hurdles. It's hard to argue that they haven't at the moment. Um, and you've got, you know, as as Pat mentioned, uh, Bally Adam, lucky to be second. I think we can say that in the Supreme. Yeah, he was getting he was getting well beat. I think, you know, obviously appreciate it. We can probably say now is, you know, head and shoulders the best at, at, at two miles. But yeah, he was getting he was getting well beat. He's had a hard enough race. 
Um, and he's coming here afterwards. There was a couple of sneezy fosters that didn't run that well yesterday. So Abacadabra, you know, so uh, yeah. Abacadabra was bolted up. He didn't get very far at Cheltenham, did he? No, he didn't have a hard point. Race. But you know what I mean. So um, I'm mean, an I mean, I expect him. I, I expect him. I expect the money to all be for my Drogo. Yeah. What about you, Leighton? Have you looked at this race? Yeah, I think skeletons have um, campaigned my Drogo very carefully uh, and very well. I just said he kept away from Cheltenham. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that he, he, he's a horse who will, will find plenty. Um, I just, I, I wasn't too sure at Kelso the last time how much Harry was holding on to. He looked like he was just about holding, holding him together. Um, and I think him, Bally Adam, I think stand out um, today. And it's a, I suppose it was a question whether Bally Adam has recovered from the exertions of Cheltenham. Um, there's no reason why not, but I should think it, it would be between these two uh, with... You know, he he is the big potential, um, Mr. My, my Drogo. Let's hope we see something special then. According to Leighton Aspel, the Mersey will be doing the top two in the market. Three o'clock then. Well, this is going to be a quick preview. I think we can say that all over the land, wherever you're looking for a quick preview, because it is the Doombar Maggle, Grey Bond Novice Chase. Nicky Henderson is two from two in the last 10 years. It's going to be three from three kills, isn't it? Because all Shishkin has to do is jump round. Uh, yeah, exactly. He's got nothing to beat. I mean, you know, the horses behind him might be OK, but, I mean, he's he's a bit special, isn't he? I mean, he yeah. absolutely sauntered home at, uh, uh, at Cheltenham, and he's going to saunter home again, isn't he? I mean, he's just a fantastic horse. He's got Gumball against him. We know that he can, you know, probably see him off as, as likable as Gumball is. Fernandel de Sivola, progressive horse, Elvis Mail, but they're they're, playing for they're not great one horses anyway, yeah. are they? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just what it's, it's what's left and what's prepared to come. So we over. sit back and we enjoy it. So what I want to know from Paul Keeley is what does Shishkin do next year? Champion chase or can you see him? Maybe uh, it depends. It depends. I mean, I, you know, if he was say he was with Paul Nichols, at some point you would definitely see him running in a King George for sure. Um, whether yes. Nicky Henderson wants to stay where he is at two miles, he's going to, you know what I mean? He's got, two miles is always going to be the soft option because he's never that deep uh, the competition and he can, you know, as long as he stays fit and healthy, he can dominate that for a while. Yeah, so we're looking, I mean, Leighton, the, the comparisons with Altior are, are, are unbelievable really, aren't they? This is a worldie. Uh, so does he just go on now and dominate the two mile division? Very possible. Um, you know, he could... Step into Altior's shoes. He looked, he looked, he looked awesome at, at Cheltenham. Even though, you know, typical Arca, they did set the race up for him. They went very fast, but you know, he really was strong at the finish and um, very visually imp impressive. Impressive. Uh, he, he looks the real deal, and I, I should think he could win over a variety of trips. But if Altior, if Altior's days are, are, are numbered, then I should think just going you know, to just fill his boots and, and fill them very well. Shishkin filling his boots and you'll love to hear that and I think Kills is right isn't it any other man but Nicky's a bit scarred from those King George ideas I think Pat Coon let's bring you on is there a without market I suppose there is but w whether this will be the most popular without market I don't know because people just want to see the, the greatness here don't they yeah I think this is one of these races where you don't have to have a bet you just enjoy watching a champion run and he's going to be what six seven or one on and you think well okay but he did run at Cheltenham maybe I don't know no, not really. I mean, Sprinter Sacra rocked up here in 2012, won at seven on. Duvan won here at uh, 2016 at seven or one on. And he's going to win at seven or one on, isn't he? I think Gumball will lead him over the first two fences and that'll be as exciting as the race goes from that point of view. So if you want to get involved with Shishkin, perhaps the idea is to look at next year's anti-post odds for the champion chase. Big call time then. What have we got for you in the studio? I'm smiling at this because I think it might be good fun. Paul Keeley, take the floor. Uh, yeah, very simple for me. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's very often about horses, but Clander's over 7 to 1 for the King George. What's it doing at that price? Those cheek pieces made so much of a difference. I mean, you, if you remember when he won his first when he won his first King George, he's like, don't get to the front too soon, don't get to the front too soon. Here he's in front six furlongs from home and just lobbing away and absolutely loving it. He's as good as any horse in Ireland at yeah. the moment, right? And we know historically they don't tend to come over, do they? No. Like, you know, every now and again they might. As things stand, I mean, you've got to remember the first four in the betting of yesterday's race uh, were in their fifth and sixth seasons over fences. There isn't anything great coming up from our side for the Stayers. Yeah. He's seven to one now. He's going to be seven to four on the day. At Why the has he become best. so unfashionable, this horse kid? Because uh, he doesn't handle Cheltenham. That's, that's, it's amazing. It's as simple it? as that. Yeah. It's as simple as that. I mean, you know, when I mean, Desert Orchid finally won a Gold Cup. Like, you know, in 1989. But imagine 
if we just moved him forward 30 years, right, he wouldn't get the love he used to get because he yeah. couldn't handle Cheltenham. Yeah. Like, you know, which is ridiculous given how good he was. But that's that's the start, you know, okay, Clandizobu isn't at that level, but he's an exceptionally good horse uh, on a flat track, uh, which he get, got there. I mean, that, that was sensational yesterday. It might not have been the strongest heat in the world, but, you know, he won it in a hat canter by 26 lengths. And the fact that they're talking about going to the Bet365 Gold Cup, Pat Cunha, but a sponsorship there, courtesy of Dave Orton, was going to be my big call because the, the, the aggressive campaigning there is fantastic, isn't it? This is what we've been talking about, Kills, all season. Seeing these, you know, Royal Pagai did it. Okay, it didn't work out for him in the Gold Cup. But to see these horses carrying the big weights in the handicaps needs to come back. Well, you can only really trust Paul Nichols of the top trainers to do it over here, can't yeah. you? You know, I mean, you're running Denman and we ran Corto Star of a high 160s in the old round chase before he, you know, took the world before him. Um, and, you know, he'll have a crack. There aren't that many that do. It'd be great to see, wouldn't it, if he if, if he does go there? Mm. Right. Yeah, it would yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I fancy Kitty's light for the race. You know, he's our horse here on Watch Out, Christian Williams. So, will he be out the handicap every chance now? Uh, Pat Cooney, have you got a big call? Yeah, I just think it's ridiculous, really, and a terrible shame that the likes of Secret Reprieve is probably not going to get into the Grand National. And I do think the current winners of the English, uh, Irish, Scottish, and Welsh Grand Nationals. But like the Masters Golf, you should be automatically allowed to run in the race in the top 40. Secret Reprieve should be in it. And he even go back uh, uh, at the start of last week, Free Will and Dillon won the Irish Grand National. Now, if there was a gap between races and Free Will and Dillon wanted to come for the race, he wouldn't get in. He won the Irish National for 137. But it would add so much substance and spice to the race, wouldn't it? Secret Reprieve, a Welsh Nashter turning up, an Irish Grand National winner turning up. Neither of these two could get into the race. And I just think you look at some of the horses, they're 100 to 1, yes, Mon Moan, et cetera, Aurora Zonka. They can all win, of course they can. But the National would be a better race with the current Welsh National winner in, and indeed Irish Grand National winner. Just give them a freebie, let them enter next year. All of a sudden, the connections of the Devon National winner are cheering Pat Cooney, aren't they? <laughs> to try and get a run in the Grand National. Leighton Aspall, take the floor with a big call. Um... My only only thing I'm, I'm very um, concerned about at the minute is the the, the racehorse owners club. Um, I just I can't believe it. It's it, it's found any legs or, or it's been given any mileage. Um, I've seen them interviewed on look on Sunday at the weekend, and I really I really can't get the concept. And you know a lot of people seem to be sucked into it at the moment. And I I just hope that it, it doesn't go belly up like uh, you know a few of these these, these Ventures have before, and, and 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 you know people, people get left with egg on their face, and you know with trainers and and, and owners, and you know eventually the horses themselves. Shall we bring you in here again? Now you've been, we, we've got to try and keep a lid on this. Yeah, I know, I'm not going to, you know, I, you know, I had me rant when I was angry about it before. I mean, I I I think Leighton's right though. I mean, you know, if you, you saw it on like on Sunday, I mean, apparently they only own a fraction of the horse. We're talking about Potts Corners here, um, specifically running in the Grand National, and they're selling. 0.002% of a share and saying, take a share in prize money, share, be, be an owner. And, you know, he'd have to win two and a half grand nationals just to, uh, just to win 20 quid. They got Balco to flow uh, in there share. as well. They got Balco to flow in there as well, yeah. You've seen the colours? I mean, uh, yeah. Like they were representing no, no, every no. single share. Well, it's like, yeah, exactly, yeah. Oh, got millions yeah, of them. Know, it's like, oh, so... Risky, halved yeah, again, exactly. isn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's discordantly ridiculous. look like playing ridiculous. colours, doesn't it? But yeah, I mean, I don't think it was a good. I don't, you know, so somebody um, on, on Twitter wrote a very good piece. I can't, God, I'd love to give them the credit because I can't remember the name. Uh, but it, it basically said, look, you know, this isn't ownership. At the end of the day, it's a very expensive, uh, probably too expensive racing club, and that's it. It's nothing to do with ownership whatsoever. Enjoyed from your living room yeah. at the moment. Yeah, like, you know, I mean, like I said, you know, you, you, you pay 75 quid to get a pen, a key ring and an email telling you that he worked well, ate some hay and had a crap. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? That's not ownership. <laughs> no, it's a racing club, Leighton Aspel, with a sizzling mm. big call. 3.35 at Aintree on Saturday, yet another grade one. Brilliant card it is because the stayers hurdle we have for you. We've got the big three. I think we can say that from the division meeting again, Pat Cooney. Yeah, I tell you what I was surprised with. Uh, you know, Dickie Johnson retired last week. I thought if he was going to retire in the next seven days, why not win on Time Hill in the in the, in the the class one? 
um, and then retire there and then. But so good luck to him. He's made his decision. But Time Hill is a worthy favourite, a well back favourite at nine to four. Uh, at the moment, Paisley Park second in at three. There's never much between them in price, nor on the race course. And then it's Roxana at six ten bar. That includes Liz Nagar Oscar, who's got a few friends. Bear in mind, Rachel Blackmore was riding that one for the first time. So it's tough to separate the top two. My eye, though, is drawn to Roxana. I think three miles good ground and the invaluable £7 mayor's allowance. Add in the Skiltons are red hot. She's a very viable each-way alternative to the big two in this race. But always a hot bedding race, this one. I think Time Hill is sure to be favourite. He is that uh, bit fresher having missed Chelton, of course. But uh, Roxana, that floats my boat receiving the £7 allowance. Mm, so back at the scene of her... One of her greatest wins anyway, Roxana. Uh, which way is Kills looking at this? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, uh, to comment about Johnson, you, you know, he didn't, you know, he obviously could have ridden Native River as well. But then it's a typical sort of understated um, manner in the way yeah. he does things. Like, you know what I mean? You know, let whoever rides the win or Grand National have the glory. I'm not yeah. going to suddenly announce it on Saturday and spoil that, it for that anybody is, else. You know what I mean? So, you know, just do it on a quietish day for, for jump racing and, yeah. uh, you know, perfect always. Um you know, and he was coming to the end. He might just have had enough now. Like, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Hopefully, Dickie will be coming on and telling us. Yeah. Exactly what. Yeah. Um, my take on this race is I'm not 100% convinced that the top three are as that far clear with the rest. Um, a little bit of a worry about Time Hill. Um, I don't know how long it takes to get over a muscle injury, but I don't like backing a horse that um, missed a race three weeks ago because of a setback and is now running. You know what I mean? It just, yeah. ah, just just worries me a little bit. Paisley Park, I think we can establish that he isn't the horse he was two years ago. He's still a very good one, but he ain't a superstar no more. Yeah, Graham Robbins proved right on that, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I think that's I think that's I think that's definitely the case. He's not a superstar anymore. I think Roxana is very very solid, but I don't think it's just those three. And yeah. I. I think Third Wind is just going to be really, really well suited to this track. Uh, and he's just improving with every single run. And, OK, he's not the, like, the most likely winner. He's 14 to 1, the odds tell you that. But I think he's going to run a big race. And he'd be the one that I'd be looking to back each way. I was half tempted to back Dior Kerr uh, for Noel Meath because he always thought the absolute weld of him. And he didn't take to chasing. And, you know, it takes a little while to come back. Yeah. Um, but the trainer's having a very quiet spell at the moment, isn't he? So that worries me. Yeah, okay, that is interesting. Uh, uh, we've had the connections of the top two in the betting on the show, and when Philip Hobbs came on and told us about Time Hill, the plan was, I think anyway, to get him there, because he didn't want to, you know, he's quite light-framed, apparently. Whereas Paisley Park was desperate to get a run in the Cleve, and it didn't happen. And when we then had Aidan Coleman on two weeks ago, he said, I'd like another crack at, you know, uh, flooring Porter on slightly softer ground. I mean, if you look at his re his record on good ground, it's very good. Mm. And he's one from one at Aintree. I think of the market leaders, he's the one. So while I do like third wind, and I'll definitely be having a bit on him, it's Paisley Park for me. Uh, Leighton Aspel. Yeah, I'm a <laughs> Paisley Park for me too. I think he looked he looked quite rusty at Cheltenham. Um, and it was the first thing the connection said that, you know, they really wish to had that Cleve hurdle run under his belt. Um, he runs. He can, you know, he can run a bit hot and cold during his race. And I know um, that only not not too long ago, but probably after his novice year, Connections did contemplate some headgear for Paisley Park. And it wouldn't surprise me if it's still if it's still in the back of their mind now, just because he can he can lose position a couple of times during the race and make very hard work for himself and for Aidan Coleman, and then have a lot on his plate uh, when needed. Um, and I could see, I could see quite a bit of improvement in Paisley Park with it, with some headgear, um, and enough improvement to be, you know, the top stair again. Mm, so Paisley Park for me and Leighton. Which way are you going in the stairs? Get your comments in below. Time for the world's greatest race, the race that indeed does stop the globe. It is the 515, the Grand National. What a pleasure to be covering this again on What a Shout. Is it all about cloth cap? Have you taken some flyers thinking he's no value whatsoever before we go to the market? And Paul Keeley, we must, of course, give Leighton Aspel the first chance to tell us exactly what sort of horse we need for this and who's been catching his eye in the market. Well, the ratings say that cloth cap is, is a certainty um, if the handicapper has got it right. And he looks like he's he's a really a really good improver. Um, his, his run in the Labrook chase off bottom weight under a very aggressive rider on good ground, I thought that could have been his 
National and Gold Cup, but Connections took a different view and waited until the weights were published before going to Kelso. And he looked an even better horse than Kelso. And the handicapper was of the same opinion. And, he, you know, he, he, he raised him accordingly. Um, he's going to, it looks like he's going to get similar conditions. If he, you know, good to stop, good. Clean round of jumping. He's, he's got to be very dangerous. You know, it's boring and it's, it's a very short price for a race over that trip, over the, over the amount of fences. But I think he's he's got to be the you know the the the, the horse that will take all the beating. Mm. Something like, that I noticed in many clouds prep. He also won the listed uh, premier uh, race at Kelso, didn't he? Which Clothcap did in his prep for a second national. Yeah, that's right. Um, he. It was it was abandoned um, Saturday before. And luckily, he got rescheduled for the next Saturday. So he had two trips up to Scotland. Um, but luckily, you know, he, he won that with enough in hand on on very soft ground. Um, you know, to uh, you know to, to go back to entry. It's quite refreshing, isn't it, to hear someone actually tipping cloth cap? Because it, I mean, was it a price thing kills where people just were like, look, I know it's the most obvious win. Well, I've you know, yeah, I've I, I've had this problem as a tipster myself. I was, oh, I wouldn't look myself in the mirror if, if tipping that, and then sometimes you stand up there. Well, hang on a minute, like, you know, it's actually not that bad a price, mm. you know. And I think that's the case. I mean, two years ago, I was saying I can't really back Tiger. I went on the day I thought I've actually got to cover everything I've laid out on here on Tiger Roll because he'll probably win, and that is. That is where I'm coming from a viewpoint. So whatever I lay out, I'm going to make sure that Cloth Cup covers it because he does look that good. There's a, there's a minor issue. It's just if they water again uh, and to how soft they let it get because it's a fair bit softer than it was two years ago. It's not soft ground by any stretch of the imagination, but there were more water went on last night. Um, the sun's yes. supposed to be the sun's supposed to be out tomorrow. I mean, okay, it ain't going to be warm, but um, the more they put on it, the more worrying it is because he definitely wants decent ground. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I have a slight suspicion that that Kelso race fell apart a little bit as well, but he's an undeniably well handicapped horse. He was in the market that day as well, wasn't he? So yeah, he was. was yeah, you know, yeah. it wasn't like they were like, we know we're going to go with. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is a horse I, 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 I seem to have managed to get wrong for the last two years and told everybody that he was the best handicapped horse in training last year and he didn't yeah. win a single race. Uh, and now here he is, nine to two favour for the national. I can't, you know, you can't argue that. He is the deserving favour. You're not alone there. I mean, they stuck cheap pieces on him, aggressive tactics, you know, and it, it all changed mm. out. They used to hold him up, didn't they? And mm. he looked like a bit of a thinker. So Cloth Cap is on most people's shortlist. I think we can say that. If he gets anything, we'll, uh, we'll find out from Pat in a minute exactly what price he might go off. Uh, but alternatives, and I know you have got one that you're keen on. Yeah, I just think a horse who's, who's, who's been round there twice and finished fourth and fifth off marks of 159 and 164 is Annabelle Fly. And... You know, he may well have missed his chance. Uh, there's always that chance because he ran um, third and second in two Gold Cups before those national runs. You know, real sort of lung bursting efforts to get, to get so close. Uh, and last year he was given the, your, your typical national prep, couple of quiet chases, a hurdle run, which, just, which was suddenly much better form in the spring just beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, COVID came along and, and, and wiped the rest of racing off the map for a couple of months. Um, so he comes back as an 11 year old. He's only had one run. Um, and he was last of five in the Bobby Joe, but he wasn't beaten that far. He was only beating 18 lengths, 14 lengths behind Burrow Saint, who is, you know, eight to one. Uh, and, you know, he's obviously been primed for this and he's got the back class, uh, uh, you know, he's been a lot better than that handicap mark that he is. He is 11 years old, but, you know, he, he stays really well. And if, he, if he's fresh and as well as he has been, for the last two nationals that he ran, and he's got to have a serious chance. He's got to be one of the best handicaps in the race, and I always think when you approach a national, you look for that back class, and you mm. don't worry about age so much. He is quite literally the forgotten horse until people like yourself have started mentioning this week. I'd just check he was still in the race. So, but it, it, he's one of a couple for JP McManus. So I like any second now. I think ten to one is is as short as I want to go with him. Really, my worry about him, he can fiddle occasionally, but the last when he came back with that prep run, it's 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 Ted Walsh, isn't it? It's Papillon, it's Seabag, yeah, I mean, it's a Kim Muir. We know he looked that day, he steamed up the hill. You know, I, I, I come to a conclusion about the, the entry fences these days is it's not so much how you jump them, but how the horse takes to them. You know what I mean? Some horses, because you can go through the top of them, they're, not, they're nowhere near as stiff as they used to be, right? 
it's whether the horse faces up to them or not, because yeah. a lot of them just don't, you know, they're so oh, crikey, look at, look at that. And you, you can see them not taking to it. With others, will just brush through and it won't bother them. They'll it's just, like a roll, yeah. They'll, they'll come and take the next fence in their stride, whether they've gone through the previous one or not, and other horses won't. So, you know, it's, it's, not, it's definitely not the jumping test it used to be. Um, I think that's personally think that's a good thing um, because, you know, there were some traps in it that, you know, probably shouldn't be there, especially in this day and age. Uh, so yeah. I think they've done right. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, so it's, it, it's how a horse takes the defences rather than, rather than whether it's a really sure-footed jumper. I don't think it's that important anymore. That brings me on to another flyer I've got before I go to Pat Cooney. Uh, if they do put more water on, I'll be definitely back in Lord de Manil. And I saw you like quite a lot. We've this spoken is, about this. This is we? one I said. I he, he was a horse I didn't think took to the fences. Yes, and he lost ground at a lot of them. I think he's he had got an the ability. That day. Well, he wasn't ready. He, 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 and he, he wasn't ready, and he was running a too short a trip. And, and over on his return at Kelso, it wasn't publicised that much. But Richard Hobson found a massive bit of birch in his leg. He's come back. He's won the trial. He, mm. I can just see him going. He's like, he's like, you know, cousin Pascal won the Hunter Chase because he was mm. up there. He took to the fences, and mm. we always see one that does it. Lord de Manil ticks a lot of boxes for me. Yeah, he, you know, he might do. But I mean, I was following him for the rest of the season after that because I thought he didn't take to the fences. Uh, <laughs> it was one of those, but, you know. But I mean, Great I you know. had it last time, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he yeah. is a soft ground lover. There's no yeah. doubt in that. So yeah. look, we could talk about this race all day. I'm sure you're out there screaming at the telly as we're going out. We've not even gone on about Kimberly like Candy. I won't get you on about that. We're short I can't on time. Can't back but... him anymore. Why not? Yeah, I just think he's too short, and I've gone off him. I just want to see Bristol de my win, really. <laughs> you know, so I've backed him. Or, come on then, all right. I've backed him. I, just, I, I, I love Bristol de my always have done. But, I mean, you know, okay, he's on for one six seven, but he's actually £2 well in because he's been given that little bit of weight. He's won a Betfair chase uh, again. Uh, that's three of them, on, on you know. Uh, and he's done it on all ranges of ground. What he wants is a flat track. Great to see him in flat, the race, left-handed track. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what he's got. If he gets into a rhythm again, he's got he's got a. Uh, a bowl, yeah, he's yeah. you know he's just gonna, you know he's gonna enjoy himself whether he gets home and and can carry that weight around is another matter as well. But I can't wait to see him run. You've got all sorts of markets, Pat Cooney, haven't you? And you've got Top Grey Market and all that sort of thing. Surely Bristol Dubai has got to be up there, hasn't he? Oh yeah, but, I mean we, we've loads of markets to own the winner, colour of the winner, to train the winner, a women jockey winning it. Runners, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Potter's Corner. That would be absolutely brilliant. This is Smith, number two B. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a 0, 0, 0.002 to one there, Potter's Corner. Yeah, um, no, loads of markets uh, on the race. I, I think the way to approach this race, cloth cap, really, you have to put him in some of your bets. He's number 28 on the race card. There's not 27 better horses than him. I think the way to play this, if you've got a fiver, have a pound each way on one, a pound each way on another, and have a pound win on cloth cap. Because at least if he wins, you're going to be uh, get your money back, maybe win 50p. So that's if you have a fiver, stick a pound win on him, and then just try and get lucky and land on the winner or the play stores with the others. He's going to be around about nine to two. We had this debate two years ago with Tiger Roll, didn't we? Everyone's going, oh, four to one. That's a miserable price. He won handily at four to one. This fellow's a similar profile. And, you know... He was always a big liability anti-post. And then when the weights came out, he was even more popular. We, I think we went 20 into 14 the, the day the weights came out. Then he's come out and won at Kelso. But Maker's got some pretty hefty liabilities anti-post on him anyway. So he's going to be, he's not going to drift alarmingly in the betting unless it hammers down with rain or they overdo the watering. He's a very solid profile. But back, back, another thing I would say as well, to people who might be watching the show for the first time, take the price. Don't leave your bet at SP. I go back to when Don't Push It won for AP McCoy. He was 20 in the morning. He went off at 10. Loads of people say, wait a minute, I got 11 quid when I got to, went to go to get my returns. And someone, well, I got 21 quid. Take the price. A lot of these horses at the fancy top end of the market will shorten up. Just make sure you take the price. That's all I can say uh, in, in terms of advice there. As for winning it, I, I, I think Burrow Saints are a perfectly good alternative to Cloth Gap. He won an Irish national as a six-year-old. Patrick Mullins riding at 10.13. And I, I would imagine that that's going to be the lightest he's been for a while. Um, but an Irish national, you know he's going to stay. You know he's been mapped out for the race. I'll go with Burrow Saint, but uh, just, just good luck with everybody having a bet. 
Yeah, uh, let's just, I'm glad that Pat mentioned Burrow Saint. It would have been tomatoes being thrown at the telly if we'd not mentioned him. I mean, there are 40 runners. We can't go through them all. But um, what's the vibes on him? I thought the experience might be an issue for him, but if he get, listen, it, it's could just be head right, jumps, or I don't know. Jumps well, he's been he's been absolutely primed for it. I don't think there's an issue with the weight, is there? Because there's a COVID allowance of three pound, and our weights aren't published in Ireland. When you see the weights, um, there the weights carried. Yeah. Uh, but over here, there's a COVID allowance of three pound, so it will actually be carrying 11 2 makes Bristol Demise ta uh, t task even harder because he'll actually be carrying 11 stone 13. Yeah, listen, I, it's, that, that's easy to forget, isn't it? But what's you know what's absolutely paramount there is you've had some great advice on the Grand National. We can't mention them all, so get your sections below. We'd love to read your feedback. That is the 2021. It's back, the Grand National. <laughs> Weekend winner time here then on What A Shout. There's already been a bit of consternation because we've been just talking about each other's naps. And uh, let's go to Pat Cooney. He's going to Linfield. Yeah. Is it, is it Grand National Day or something? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, a winner is a winner. And I'm off to Linfield in the 240 for a horse called Classical Wave. Uh, he's won two races thus far uh, in, in this season. He was particularly impressive over course and distance last time out. He's gone up in the weights. He's going up in grade. But he looked a horse that won very, very handily. And he's got he's on an upward curve. Um, and I expect a big run from him. I think he'll win this and then go on to be a horse that can uh, quit himself in even better company going forward. So 240 at Lingfield, classical wave. Yeah, you were shaking your head, weren't you, when we were talking about that going to Lingfield. But a winner yeah, is a winner. <laughs> well, there are some great cards actually elsewhere. Chepso is <laughs> always a good card. People like betting away, don't they, as well, yeah. to you know, bolster the bank for the national. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go third wind in that stairs hurdle each way. I think he's really going to like the track and he can serve it up to the biggies. OK, the race after that, 4.15, look no further than Snow Leopardess for Charlie Longsden. Of course, we saw her running on, didn't we, in the four miler, or what used to be the four miler, at, uh, at the Cheltenham Festival. I think she'll come on for that. She hadn't run since Boxing Day in the Roland Merrick. Love her chances in the 4.15. Could she be a future national horse? Leighton Aspel, have you got a weekend winner for us? Okay, my weekend nap is at Dundalk in the 3.25 and it's Pineapple Express. Um, he won a few days ago, three days ago at Goran. Uh, really impressively, came from, came from the back and I think he's on a still on a major upward curve and I don't think the handicapper has quite got this guy yet. Lovely one for Leighton, striking while the iron is hot. And while we've got you, Leighton... It seems remiss while you're working all these great horses at Josie O'Brien's not to ask you about a couple. I, this is I'm sort of indulging myself a little bit here. Kills is a fan as well. How's Thunder Moon going at the minute? The Guinea's hopeful. Thunder Moon is very well. He he, he wintered really well. Um, he's not the biggest horse. He grew a little, but he got a very strong. Um, and trust me, I never get near him. I'm I'm way too heavy to ride Thunder Moon. He's got his. He's got a selection of, 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 of lighter riders to ride the likes of him, but everything's everything's very well. He's had a he's had a trip to Leperstown for a gallop and a couple couple of trips to the Curra. I think I'm pretty sure he's gone straight to the Guineas. He tried and tested a Brian uh, route. Um, uh, you know we we had him and the leading filly as well, pretty gorgeous, and they are bought really well. And they're 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 two really big hopes for this season. Happy days. That's what I wanted to hear. Wintered well. That's all I need. All I need now is the winter to go away and for the sunshine to come out and Thunder Moon can go and win that 2,000 guineas. Wow, all the legs are still there and moving in that's the right all, direction. That's, that's all it, you want to yeah. know, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Been real, real pleasure having you on late and thanks so much for joining us. Sometimes you don't know what you're going to get, but you're the perfect guest for this weekend, man. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Good, Good luck. Good luck. Get your feedback in for late and then all your memories, what's going forward. Great to have Joseph O'Brien going forward, isn't it? It's all about the national though. Kills, thanks for coming back on. No problem. Finally enjoyed it as usual. Happy days. We'll see you next week. Uh, Pat Cooney, you the same. Enjoy it. Let's hope Cloth Cap goes and absolutely gives you a spanking. Uh, yes, thank you. Much appreciated. <laughs> delete image okay yeah great stuff all right so that has been what a shout for this week myself dave orton signing off don't forget safe gambling so much still going forward don't go back in every runner in the national keep it nice and simple enjoy the sport don't forget to download the free must have racing post app you can do that on the app store or the google play store itself don't forget to keep getting your comments in for everyone on youtube like and subscribe until then it's national day enjoy the sport